So Julien, last time I talked to you was about a week ago. What's happened since then? Well, we've launched that uh, campus party. Um, that was a, a pretty interesting uh, event. And I started sharing about the, the leap of faith, which was from you know, leaving from, from a company that we might see in the background, Rovio, over there, um, and, uh, and jumping to uh, Scarlet Motors. Well, personally, I'm doing that because I'm passionate about cars, I'm passionate about technology, um, and I'm passionate about mobile. Uh, so we have on the other side Nokia right here where I used to work for a while and uh, where I, I never thought that I would end up. It was one of my dreams when I was a kid. Um, I got my first mobile phone and, and I was so excited about it. I was like, well, I wish I could provide my feedback to Nokia. I wish I could tell them all the cool stuff that you can do or even report the bugs and these kind of things. It is important to be passionate about what you do and it's important to drive towards that direction. But there are a lot of people that are passionate about a lot of things but they can't necessarily connect with the people that really make things happen. And I had exactly the same challenge when I was working on Nokia, working on the integration of products. So it was the last gate before the product would go to the market, taking the software, the hardware, putting that together and making sure that it works really well. And I, I couldn't really get the feedback from, from the users in, because I couldn't talk about the product. I couldn't talk about what we were doing until the product would be launched. And uh, I was lucky enough to be a uh, part of the uh, launch of the N97 um, at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And I got to give interviews, I got to um, present the product to the press. And that's when I started connected with, connecting with bloggers, with, with all these people. And what they really loved about it and about the story was that I could give them a bit of insight on what we were building. But it was helping them to learn and discover more about the mobile ecosystem. So I, I refined that, that idea and this is what we're looking at now with, with Scarlet Motors. What we want is, of course we want to drive the design of the product. We, we are responsible for the people that are gonna drive in our product. So we have to make sure that it follows standards, that it follows regulations and that it's safe. So we need to control part of the experience. But at the same time, we wanna give an opportunity for people to learn about the automotive industry and learn about how things are done and why they're done that way plus for the passionate, the ones that really have some skills and talent to participate in part of the creation of the product. So that might be some design element for the interior, for example, it might be the wheels design, it might be the, um, maybe a, a side view mirror, some smaller details, but it might also just be connecting us with the right partners. Uh, we have been networked in different fields with Yona and the other members of the team and each of us is now being able to draw in the network and finally work with the people that they've been dreaming of working with. Because we've been in big companies in which you have rules. Now we set the rules and we have the possibility of working with these passionate people. Our strategy is partnering with companies and giving them an opportunity to be on front of stage, be there with us and show their talent, show their potential. And we want to do the same with the members of the community and, and the users. Well, there are a couple of things around why mobile and cars are starting to merge and get together. Uh, one of them is the evolution of, of the dumb phone towards the smartphone. The smartphone has created in a value that people have been able to understand the fact that they need to char charge it every single day. Uh, we're looking at an electric car in the same model, which is we need to create enough value for people to feel that the charging and the range anxiety is not a problem at all. It just becomes part of their lives and, and they're moving forward. So that's the first step. Then the second one is to open the community to the public. And we're now in beta, so we have a website, which is not only our website for the community, but it's also our intranet on which we work every day. It's our extranet with our partners. So everybody is on the same platform which means that we have access to the consumers, our employees have access to the consumers, and our partners have access to the consumers. So we really flatten every single organization to make it a lot easier to work with. And that also means that our partners get feedback from real customers. They don't only get feedback from us. On the mobile side of things, that's where things get more interesting because we're gonna be working on the infotainment system, which is a, a massive piece nowadays in any car. It's something that's really important. That's not only about the uh, you know media music all this kind of stuff it's also about navigation it's also about personal services and so on so this is a part that we should be able to open fairly fast to the community using mobile applications and a mobile phone has a GPS it has a data connectivity 
um, it has a fairly good screen and, and resolution and so forth. So we should be able to get these beta apps um, to the contributors and the consumers really fast. Now, the other aspect is, is connectivity. Nowadays, we are connected, but the experience on a smartphone in a car is really not the one you want to have. First of all, it's illegal in most of the countries and it's really dangerous. So the integration of these mobile and digital services in the car environment have to be done thinking about the car as a mobile product. You can't just think about slapping an iPhone or an Android or a Windows phone on the dashboard. That's not going to work. An iPad eventually, but even that, it's still not meant for it. We have already a design, a 3D model. We're working on part of the mechanics to validate technology with uh, our industrial partners, but we already have some, like most of it done. We could have just waited a bit and build a first prototype, build a concept design and, and then launch the product. But we would have missed an opportunity for people to share along the journey. Well, the first thing we'll release will be most likely the mechanical design so that it, it will give an opportunity for, for understanding better and so forth. So we'll, we'll release part of the design one at a time um, and we'll give an opportunity for people to to do some beta testing one way or another. If you want to contribute to the design of the car, the best way is to register on scarletmotors.com. We're still on a beta stage right now, so we're not approving everybody at once, but we're taking people group by group and kind of hand-holding them in the community and kind of learning how it works all together. And, uh, and from there, it's about being passionate. It's about sharing your ideas, sharing your feedback, you know, showing what, what you know how to do best. And this is gonna be already a great start. All right. Hey, yeah. thanks a lot.